Last time, in fact, I did an interview with you. You were out here to do the promotional film quiz for the Let's Dance album. And uh, you were, in fact, the album had just been released. And you must be absolutely happy the way things turned out with it. Firstly, I'd like to say how good it is to be back in Australia yeah. yet again. And secondly, yes, I'm over, overwhelmed and over the moon. Tonight, Countdown goes west for a special humdrum with the man who fell to Perth, David Bowie. Plus your host, John Paul Young. And the new one for the police. Now we've got to cross over to one of the most articulate, well-groomed media personalities that this country has to offer. My very good friend, Mr. Ian Meldrum, speaking with David Bowie live in Perth. Well, uh, on the last interview I did with you, you were just out here really to do the promotional film clips and the album was just about to be released. Um, or was, in fact, released that, over those, those three weeks. Uh, that you're out here. Um, it, it's been a great success for you. Um, you must be very happy about that. Oh, yeah, over the moon. Yeah. Um, the film clip I've got to, uh, of Let's Dance that we've just seen um, caused a bit of sort of uh, waves in this country. Mm. Uh, and in fact, I must say, when I first saw it, I sort of went, I got a bit surprised myself. But it was a great film clip. Did you find any sort of criticism towards it on the, on, you know, when you were overseas at all? Or about overseas, it. it was taken the way that it was presented. My idea was to present an indigenous people right. in a capitalist, white, mainly white society, right. and the problems of the interrelationships between the two. It was taken at that symbolist level, right. in which it was uh, that was the context of the thing. Obviously, over here, it's going to be taken in a more personalised manner because the countryside is recognisable, and the particular peoples are recognisable. Right. But um, overseas, generally, it was taken in terms of representational of any given society, whether it be South Africa, um, America, or Australia, or whatever. It was um, taken in a generalist manner. Now, when you wrote the song, um, that's one thing, yeah. to then come up with a concept for a film clip, uh, where did you actually get your ideas from and when? It seemed a waste just to sort of sing the song myself and present myself. I thought, as you've got four minutes of free time, which will be shown all over the world, you might as well try and do something a little more than just creative with it. Right. Make some sort of, present some question about uh, our society. Right. Um, I noticed with the film clip uh, that uh, literally everyone uh, are sort of next, uh, like they're extras that have just sort of been come off the street. But everyone seems to be having a very good time. Um, was that the way it was with all that filming out here? It was in the bar, right. that particular bar scene. It was, um, it was uh, a lot of laughs. It was great. Now, one thing I said in the last interview was that I thought, um, well, I was hoping that China Girl would be the, the second single. In fact, it was. Um, yet again, a, a very different film clip, of, of course, to Let's Dance. Yeah. Um, and just tell us about how you put that together in this, in, in this country. When, when people were hearing him saying he's doing it down in Chinatown, people saying, well, why didn't he do it over in China or somewhere? Mm. Like that? I think, again, whilst we were here, I made two or three clips. Um, again, I wanted to ut utilise the, the strange beauty of uh, Australia. Right. Because, believe it or not, it's not, it's not particularly known about in the rest of the world. I mean, the rest of the world have uh, kind of a, a usual kind of cliche idea of what Australia is about. And I wanted to put it in a context where it hadn't been seen before. Right. Um, as, as far as the story of the song goes, um, what I wanted to present was the idea of the imperialist Westerner coming to um, a foreign society and, and sort of dazzling the uh, indigenous peoples with the idea of their own, of the Western way of life. Right. And that it's not necessarily a good thing to be jumping for. Um, did it surprise you, and especially in this country, and I don't know if, if you got the feedback, that suddenly three people you used in the film clips, uh, in Let's Dance, Terry and Jolene, and then in, in, this, in, in China Girl, in, did, were you surprised that they suddenly gained this publicity? Tell me about that, about uh, Terry and Jolene. I know about the uh, Jolene thing. Well, uh, I mean, suddenly everyone wanted to do interviews with them, and um, they were very shy, very shy people, and very nice people. Mm. And really, all they were really interested in was getting on with their, their school and their dancing. Did they but cope with it well? Were very they? well, yeah. Well, that's fine. Um, right, let's get on to uh, the tour itself. Yeah. Um, it's uh, some. I've read 
certain magazines where you say sometimes you don't like touring and other times you totally and utterly enjoy it. Yeah. Um, this has been fascinating, this tour. Yeah? Absolutely enjoyable, every single day of it. It's been... I've never known a tour like it for myself, I and mean, it's just been great. Uh, so what for uh, the future? More touring. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on I, I certainly wouldn't put that out of, uh, out of hand uh, ever again. But at the moment, if things uh, go like this, I mean, it's just the, the whole atmosphere on the tour has been so great. Films? Yeah, there are two in the offing for next year. You've done many films, and uh, you've played the stage role, of course, in Elephant Man in New York. Is David Bowie, the actor now, searching all the time for a character? Uh, no, I'm thinking, I think I look, look for a concept in the script, and a well-written script. Right. Um, it's, it's just hard to uh, predict what kind of things I'd be doing. I mean, you play it? one role in Hunger, and then yeah. a very different role in Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Oh, I, I think, think the diversification is, for me, is, is of, of, of paramount importance, because I still right. haven't found myself as uh, where I want to be as an actor. I mean, it's, it's, it's all new to me, right. and but, I'm enjoying that process tremendously. Was it uh, strange to play opposite another musician? Songwriter? No, singer. because he, he conducted himself songwriter. as an actor in, uh, all the way down the line. So it, it was still just working with actors and with Jack and Tom. Right. There was no difference between uh, Sakamoto and uh, uh, the other two guys at all. Uh -huh. he, was, he was really serious about it and it was really great. Really um, great I don't know if you'll take this as a compliment, but when David Niven died, um, I read two articles in where they in fact referred to perhaps David Bowie being the new answer to, uh, to, to uh, David Niven. There's your answer. <laughs> no, I, 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 I think it's, uh, I think that's quite a been level because it's, I'm, I'm so strictly English of the English School of Acting. English. It's not, I identify, I think, far more with, with the John Hurts and right. Tom Courtney's as, as a school of acting. Right. That's, the, that's where I feel most comfortable because I, I, I wouldn't, uh, have any pretensions to all the method school or anything like that. All right, um, the, the tour, I mean, everyone in Australia is looking forward to it. So am I. Uh, the live version of Modern Love, I think, is, is, is wonderful. Yes. And the filming of that yeah. um, is great. Yeah. Uh, and that alone shows that you really are enjoying it. Oh, it's a nice bit of film, that. All right, well, listen, uh, thanks again for doing the interview. It's my pleasure. And I don't have to wish you best of luck for the, for the tour because it's going to be a great tour. Uh, literally, well, totally sold out. And uh, I just can't wait to see you in concert again. Great. Thanks, Thank you. Man. Enjoy. Take care. Oh, wowie bowie. Uh, that's going to be a great concert. I hope everybody's got their tickets there. The glimpse of David Bowie in Perth today. Been in his time the Thin White Duke, the Young American, and Ziggy Stardust. For a generation, David Bowie has baffled fans and foes alike with his multi-personality. He's even got two different coloured eyes. Today in Perth, the rock superstar unveiled another of his personalities. With this look at the 1983 David Bowie, we'll say goodnight. Achieve some status as a, a pop artist. Um, I'd like to be fairly committed to contributing my um, uh, viewpoints on, on what are the immoralities of the world. The world is probably in the most catastrophic period of its, of our, of our knowledge. Um, I think it's uh, almost my duty to try and do something about it in positive terms. My little child.